Hi there, I'm Amy Ellis and this is So Modern Quilts. My goal with this channel is to inspire and educate quilters and aspiring quilters with tips and tricks at the sewing machine from my years of experience. Today I'm here to talk about the color shift quilt along and selecting fabrics so that you can have success in the gradient of your quilt. First I want to invite you to sign up for the emails to make sure that you get all the videos and information about the quilt along in the links below in the description. And next I want to tell you that I am really excited about this quilt and the direction that it's taking. So let's look at my fabrics. This has been a bit of a journey. I uh, usually, well, I like to encourage you to shop for gradient fabrics in person. And I know with coronavirus and everything happening in the country, it's hard right now to get to the fabric stores. And that was the case for me. I went ahead and ordered online, hoping, hoping that I liked exactly what I ordered because on screen is so different than in person. So, they came and I decided that the first two fabrics, well, two of the six fabrics that I bought are a little too green. You can see here this bottom, or not bottom, but this wavy ocean one and then this top grid both have a little too much green in them. So I took those two out and decided to go to the fabric store so that I could work with the four remaining fabrics that I really love. And I started with this navy. I really like the colors and the, the little dot. It's a print, but it, it reads very blue. So that's one thing you want to look for is even if you're doing, say, a print, this reads very pink. So I would, you know, go with pinks to work with this one. If you have a big florally print that might not be the best option because when you cut it down uh, sometimes you lose the color that it's reading so a couple of things to keep in mind for sure as you're shopping as i was at the fabric store looking for the right pieces to mix in with these four fabrics i decided that this one in the middle had too much gray it felt a little bit dusty and not as true blue as I was looking for. So I decided to eliminate that one as well and ended up adding some really pretty options. So we're going to blues and then a lighter blue. And this one has got a little, little something extra in there, but it's all shifting towards that super light blue and this one is it's barely blue there's it could almost be white depending on your quilt but for this situation it's definitely reading blue so a couple more things to think about you can definitely do this in solids I um, my first one was done in solids and I love it but I wanted to show you how I would work with prints in this round and blue is always a favorite color of mine so it was an easy fit for me and I always encourage you to start with a color that you love and it's definitely easier starting on one end or the other instead of starting with a middle print so I like to start with the darkest print and then work my way lighter it's just kind of a, a simpler transition of color to kind of suss out so and if you make mistakes you know you buy a fabric that has too much green in it you just get to add that to your stash and it becomes part of future projects so these are mine and i'm looking forward to making this color shift quilt and we we'll, we will be talking about cutting soon but for right now let's look at a couple of tools that you might use to help you understand color and and getting the gradient that you're looking for in your quilt the first one is a color wheel these are really, you know, inexpensive and easy to come by. You can even look online for just a digital one. It's, you know, sometimes it's handy to have it in person. On the back especially, I love how they show the gradients and what happens when you add green, or not green, white and black. What happens when you add the white and the black to your fabrics um, or color? And so it's kind of like how I was explaining my my dusty gray fabric that's it it reads blue all by itself but when you put something else next to it it definitely has more of a gray undertone understanding those undertones is really important as you 
develop your palette to work with for a gradient. Another tool I like to keep on hand is color cards or color um, chips of some sort. This can be paint chips from the hardware store. In my case, I have a Bella Color Matcher. They don't make these anymore, but they're, they were super handy. And it's now kind of out of date because some of the fabrics, they are not um, dying anymore. But I love working with the gradient and finding the, the pieces that work for me. So this was in a, a tall book and I took it apart, put it on rings so that I can play with the color. And years ago, I had a Kona color card that I cut apart, like you've seen people doing, and I still have that somewhere. I couldn't find it today. <laughs> but also using a color card is handy just for seeing all the colors because when you have it on screen, it's very different than um, in person. And it can vary by dye lot as well. So if uh, you are <laughs> looking at this and your color doesn't quite match when you get it in the mail, that would be why. And they do, they try really, really hard to get it <laughs> to match all the time, but it's, it's quite the process, especially with as many colors as they are producing now. So this one's more recent. That's still kind of old. <laughs> it's three years old. Easy to find online and, um, they're helpful to have, so I appreciate it. But I wanted to look at these purples here because within this one color range, there is a huge variety of color. And some of these have a lot more pink or red added in, and some have a lot more black or blue added in. So it definitely helps to understand your undertones and the colors that you're definitely drawn to and then looking for pieces that fit so I would you know immediately eliminate quite a few of these the more raisiny colors don't resonate but I kind of like this dusty gray purple and if you're if you want dusty gray purple then you just select fabrics that also have more of that dusty gray purple and <laughs> and keep going with it so but as you go, you might also find that you like the brighter purples as, you know, an option. So it's really about honing your, your likes and your dislikes and then working with what you've got. So in the end, that dusty purple just doesn't fit with a lot of the other colors that I have selected. And you can see how you have a little bit of movement in the colors there, but also you, um, it, they're they're consistent. This is too blue, right? This is well, that kind of works. So it's a matter of of trying. Trial and error is always part of the fabric selection process when you're working in a gradient, especially. And finding the colors that really speak to you is important. So I encourage you to take the time to look through fabric that you already have and see if you can create a gradient there. And then if those aren't speaking to you, you don't want to make a quilt with those, take what you've learned and apply it to fabrics that you're shopping for now. And so that you don't have as much of an, you know, a, a re-shopping experience as I did. I think that's everything for today. I hope that you have some good tangible tips that you can work with in, in selecting your own fabrics. If you have questions, leave them in the comments below so we can all learn together and I will do my best to answer those as they come in. And I really look forward to quilting with you and I'll be back next week with some cutting tips. Have a great weekend and I will see you soon.